A warm welcome to each one of you to this worship service this morning. And as we prepare ourselves to worship God, let's bow down our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful morning which you have given to us. And as we prepare ourselves to worship you, continue to guide us through your Holy Spirit that we may discover your love and purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. And through him we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us all rise and sing the opening hymn. Lord, I hear of showers of blessing. Let us worship God, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. O Lord, open our lips. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. crucified for us, have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Accept our prayers and praises and have mercy upon us. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. So let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. We all join and say, O God, our Father, we have sinned against Thee in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved Thee with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy upon us. We beseech Thee, cleanse us from our sins, and help us to overcome our faults. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for choosing us to be the holy people in order that we may reflect your image and likeness. Help us to be conscious of your holy presence with us so that we strive to walk in holiness in word and deed through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. 
Please be seated, friends. We will now hear the scripture lessons read to us. First lesson. The first lesson is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 1 to 11. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 1 to 11. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. And when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. This is what you ought to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all the pupils. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, he is faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. But those who hate him, he will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate him. Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you today. That's the end of the first lesson. Thanks be to God. Today's second Bible reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the second Bible reading. Praise be to the Lord. Let's all stand to hear the Gospel reading. The Gospel portion is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, from verses 13 to 17. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17, from verses 13 to 17. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
Let us bow down in prayer as we sing the preparatory song, after which Reverend Dr. Sarah Matthew will give us the word of God. Take time to be holy, speak oft with thy Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Today's theme for us is to be holy. The season has changed. We all were into the Advent. And now you can see a stole, the color of our stole has changed from purple to green. And we know that the festivity that we had begun at uh, the end of November is now ending and each one of us are entering into the real world where we are, we are placed maybe to work, studies, minister, or in any other way. What do we understand by the theme that has been given to us, be holy? The simplest meaning of that phrase, be holy, if we try to understand how we can be holy. The world as such understand to be holy in a very uh, simplest way is about you can take bath and uh, keep your house clean and Take care of yourself. That is about outward holiness that each one understands irrespective of the religion that you follow. But in Christianity, this outward holiness is not given that much important. Of course, it is important as the member of the society that I and you take bath, disinfect ourselves, wear clean clothes, and go out into the society in the place of work and wherever we are and present ourselves in an acceptable manner so that other people are comfortable uh, when they talk to us, when they sit beside us, when they work with us. The Christianity goes beyond these simplest things that everyone accept in their day-to-day -day life, taking care of themselves. To be holy in the Bible is something it talks about that to be holy is our duty. Why it is our duty?
to be holy as. If you think about the Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 to 11, Moses is talking to the people of God about to becoming holy. And this was the second time that the law was given to them. The first time God gave them the law. And when Moses was delayed from the mountain to come, do come down to the people, people just didn't know what to do and they forced Aaron that give us something that we can follow and uh, accept that as our God because we do not know where Moses has gone. He's lost, he's gone. And Aaron made the golden calf and they accepted it as their God. And when Moses came down in his anger, he threw the tablets, Ten Commandments, and said, what did you do? You have sinned. And the second time, God gives them the commandments and talks to them that you ought to be holy. So when God instructed Moses that even though whatever has happened, it is not over. And God persuaded Moses that he should write the tablets and present it back to the people so that people can understand what it is for them to be holy. So to be holy, is it the instruction given only to the people of Israel? Of course, it is the most uh, uh, intangible, uh, tangible uh, duty of those people who had experienced God at first sight and first hand and from them it has come to us and it has become our duty because personally we have experienced this holy God through Jesus Christ. And when you think about uh, some of the issues that were presented in the world about the spyware Pegasus and then it came out that it came from Israel and it was spying on all the governments, all big, big officials, all important people gathering information and misusing it. So this is one such example that tells us that we are called as people of God and how are we presenting ourselves to the world? And for us now as Christians, we have more responsibility irrespective of that olden stories that God came to Israel, God chose them. We have understood that we are chosen people and the mantle has fallen on us to be holy through Jesus Christ. So how are we going to make difference in this world to be holy? and why we are to be holy as such. The holiness as such talks about our conviction. What is that conviction? We ourselves has understood and experienced that the God whom we are worshipping is the living God. He is not a stone. He is not somewhere abstract that you can't find him. Although physical body might find it difficult to locate God as such, but the spirit and the mind, when they search, they find God. They connect to God. They talk to God. So we ought to be holy 
is our conviction. It is not because it was told to us by our um, ancestors, our grandparents and our parents and we have to be Christians and we have to be holy. It is our personal conviction that we have experienced this living God in our life. We have experienced him from the depth that he is living, he is working out his purpose in this world and in my life and through my life and the life which he has given to me in this world is not going to end here when I die. But my life goes beyond even when my physical existence in this world comes to an end. And that's why I have to make a difference to the world because I am sensitized with the truth that the God is living. The God is the God of justice and righteousness and equality. And how I and you can live out our life, we have to search our conviction that are we convinced about the uh, precepts of God that has been given to us in the word of God that I and you ought to imitate this one and the holy God to make difference in this world because we are his agents put into this world to spread the knowledge and wisdom of this one and the living God who is a God of justice, righteousness and equality. So each one of us, we have to search ourselves whether I and you are leading the life of that which brings beautiful things into the world, which develops peaceful uh, existence, coexistence with the people around us. The Old Testament, uh, when you read, it talks about you destroy this, you destroy them, none of them should be left out. Can we put that into practice? Because we have a conviction about the one and the living God. So then, in this 21st century, how are we going to bring out this holiness theme into our life? In this 21st century, the theme still plays in our life and it is still the most relevant theme in our life. And the only way I and you can bring out this theme is by living it, by following its standard and by not compromising with the standards of the world. And so, when we think about righteousness, justice, and equality, it talks about our life of ethics and morality. And God is always concerned about this ethics and morality that we have in our life. Unless I and you hold on to the commandments of God to lead a life of holiness, I and you can never ever destroy anything that is about idol worship, the blind belief, and all that satanic powers do in this world. First, I and you have to follow the conviction of God that he lives in us and our lives are transformed. And so the first, very big first challenge that is coming to us as we have entered into the world to get back to our life of work, responsibility as a citizens and member of the society and member 
of the household of God. Do we have this deep belief in us to be holy? All around us talks about bribes, taking money which is not yours. Everyone is taking this. It is not a secret. Your work is not done. You as a Christian, are you standing for God to be holy that you have been convicted by God's love that no, I will not do this. I won't speak lies. I won't cheat. Let it sink into our life to make a difference because it is this life that is going to convert people to the life of justice, righteousness, and equality. Unless and otherwise I and you lead a holy life, we will not be able to make difference in this world. The second thing is about our loyalty and faithfulness to God. What does it tell us? It talks to us about our commitment to God. Why we have to be committed to God? The Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 to 11, when you are reading it out, that tells us very clearly that why God chose us? Because he loved us. Because he was very much fond of us among all the people that lived in the world. So our loyalty and faithfulness to God is out to be not because of compulsion that, oh, I am Christians and I have to follow this. Our conviction should not be a burden to us that, oh, no, because if I don't do this, I will be always poor. No, that is not true. Our conviction to follow God and his commandments, his word, which is written in the Bible, is out of loyalty and faithfulness that we are responding to God's love for us. And God's love is not ending only with the choice that he made, uh, made that we are his people. And his love was so deep that he did not even kept back his own son when we were into the sin, where everyone failed. Prophets failed, priests failed, the people who kept the law, they failed, the public failed, everyone compromised themselves with the standard of the world. But the God's love was so supreme for us, which he kept his commitment with us by sending his son to be our savior, to remind us once again that we are the people of God. He loves us and we are called to live the life of holiness. So when God was committed to us, showing us through his son that how much he loved us, what is a response of our commitment to God? Do we truly love God? Or we are really getting tired with the challenges that we are facing in this world. The suffering that comes in this world because we are Christians. The losses that we might have to incur because we are Christians. Are we committed to carry the cross which comes to us in different ways? We are called to be loyal to God, to be faithful to God, 
because he is loyal to us he is faithful with us he has not given us up even when we failed miserably over and over again and the third thing which tells us is that how are we going to be doing this uh, being a holy people be holy just by god telling us can we become holy just by knowing that we are the chosen people of god can we become holy that is not possible to becoming holy i and you have to make determinations that yes this is what it is and at all cost i am going to be holy and for that i and you have to change our lifestyle into the lifestyle that honors our relationship with god and for this we have to bring resolve within us we need to have that deep will power to live for god that no i am christian i am a called person i am chosen person i will not do that i will not speak that i will not think that i will never ever turn to that low level that satanic people do evil and wicked people do no i will say no to all those standards of the world that has been compromised has brought so much of suffering pain wars theft so many lies prosperity is gone the earth is not able to produce its good that it can feed the whole world the earth is not able to produce adequate oxygen for, so that everyone can breathe properly so here we are as christians with various problems that the world is facing in our little boundaries that god has put us as a christian the place where we live the church with that we come the community that we are attached to let's ask god to help us to make a difference and the solution which is given is in ephesian chapter 5 verses 18 to 20 that how can we do this thing unless and otherwise i and you are into the word of god living the word of god we can't achieve that and the paul is proposing that speaking to one another with psalms hymns and songs from the spirit so when you live a life of spirit your life in the body the craving of the body is weakened and i and you are called upon to strengthen our spiritual life if we don't have time to sit for hours for meditation it's okay you have psalms you read it and meditate it because it talks about real life situations a problem of mind and the spirit that each one of us we face and how our spirit yields to god hymns spiritual hymns sing and all of the songs which is born out of the suffering of the people of god and how god has saved them from the miseries are with us let's use it the second thing that how we can lead a holy life is given in john chapter 17 verses 13 to 
17. That the one important thing that we have to understand is the world is antagonistic to us because just because we are the children of God. But the most important thing this passage tells us where Jesus is praying about the faithfuls in this world is about, I am not telling you to take them out of the world. They are in the world and the problem of evil is real. But Jesus is praying for you and me to the Father that protect them from evil one. So, each one of us are completely covered by the protection of God by being his children in this world. So, if I and you are going to present ourselves that I am a chosen person, I am a called person. I and you do not have to be frightened of the evil one, of the evil and wicked people. Fearlessly, you do your work, you carry out your conviction because Jesus has prayed for you and me that protect them from the evil one. Are we ready to go with the confidence in the world that we are called to be holy people of God. We are chosen people. We are people who are loved by God. We are people who are called to lead a lifestyle that brings honor to, the, uh, to God and to his word that we read every day. Let's resolve in our mind, in our spirit, and in our body, and find the ways to honor God, to lead a life that is holy. May the Lord bless each one of you. Amen. Let's all stand and sing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried, he descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, saints the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Now we'll hear the announcements of the church. Dearly beloved in Christ, I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, actually, we are coming back to the recording and everything. It is quite unfortunate. You continue to pray for the Omicron situation throughout the world. And the normalcy has to be restored. Please uphold this Omicron virus in your special prayers. Obituary, Mrs. R. Selvi, aged 46 years, wife of Mr. D. Rajendran, entered into the God's glory on 4th January 2022. Her funeral took place on the same day at Corporation Symmetry Kiel Park. 
Mrs. E. Violet Sondi, aged 86 years, wife of late Mr. Eddie Azaria, entered into the Kingdom of God on 6th January 2022. Her funeral took place on the next day at Casimedu Cemetery. I request the congregation to uphold both the families in your prayers. Church members are requested to view the telecasting of our uh, church service on Sunday by 7 a.m. in English and 8.30 a.m. in Tamil. Gifts for congregation, actually most of the congregation members would have received the gifts and the pledge cards. So during weekdays, you can collect the gifts at our church office in between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, our treasurer, uh, Mr. J. Kumar and uh, Mr. Balasingh Emmanuel and Sister Badma, Badma Selvaraj, they will be physically available at our church during weekdays in between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. I request the congregation, please come and collect the gifts along with the pledge cards. Those who have received the pledge cards, I request you to uh, submit at the church office. Church members are requested to continue to pray for the two projects of our church, construction of parsonage, extension quarters, and cemetery land. Last week's service collection in total rupees 2,67,972 rupees. Let me repeat it, 2,67,972 rupees. I wish you all the persons, those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding days, May the Lord of Emmanuel continue to bless you, dear brothers and sisters. May the new year be a blessed new year in your life. Thank you. Friends, I request you to follow the guidelines given by the state government, and that is the reason why we have the online worship services. And till, we, till you hear from us, worship services will be online throughout uh, the period given by the government. Let us pray, Lord, we commit all those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries of this week. Surround them by your grace and protect them from all evil, harm and danger and make this new year a blessed one for each one of them. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let us continue to pray for the needs of people around us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Christ have mercy upon us. Lord have 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide our leaders. And you, your ministers, with righteousness, and make your chosen people joyful. O Lord, save your people. Bless your Give peace to the world, O oh Lord. Oh God, may clean our hearts within us. Take not your holy spirit Let us pray, let us pray for peace. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true devotion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful morning which you have given to us. We pray that as we enter into a new week, surround us by your protective grace. As we have prayed for protection, Lord, particularly, we pray for all those suffer because of the Omicron variant as well as the Delta variant of COVID. We pray that you will heal them, touch them, and restore them to normalcy. It is also our prayer that you will eliminate the power of this virus from the face of this world. And pray, Lord, that all those who are involved in healing people may be given the wisdom to prescribe the right drugs for healing people. Continue to protect all of us, O oh Lord, as we stay at home in our self-imposed quarantine. We pray for those who have to go for work, surround them by your grace. And may this, Lord, week be a blessed one, for we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Oh. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. As our closing hymn, let us all rise and sing songs and solos, 637. My spirit, soul and body, Jesus, I give to thee. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace. God bless you, friends.